Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I would like to read to you another psalm that you may consider reading every night as well as Psalm 91. This is what someone has said, Lord said we should do. Now, you can take that to him if you want, but when I read this, you may be familiar with it already. You may see why he wanted us to read it every night. Okay, I'll get started. It's a contrite sinner's prayer, buddy. Please hush. A contrite sinner's prayer for pardon. Um, you know King David had an adulterous affair with Bathsheba, right? He was a man after God's own heart, and still he was tempted with adultery and got her pregnant, so he had her husband sent to the front lines of the battle, whatever war they were in with the enemy, knowing that he would get killed if he went to the front lines and sure enough he was killed so it was considered murder anyway this is what he wrote after that happened so think of what you do maybe it's not murder maybe it's not adultery but does it grieve the Lord does does it is it something you could have not done or done better so think of that, how our actions affect the Lord. What does he think about them? Okay, I'm just saying that about David to show no matter what you did, it's not too bad to be forgiven, okay? You can be forgiven. I was forgiven for what he did. I didn't do murder. I didn't send anybody to the front lines or kill him, um, but uh, adultery, yeah, I was guilty several times, sleeping with men outside of marriage before you marry him, that's, it's wrong, even though you're planning to marry him, and one, I didn't even plan to marry, so, you know, that's, uh, that's bad. And I was forgiven, and I know it. All right, let's get started. For the choir director, a psalm of David. When Nathan the prophet came to him, after he had gone in to Bathsheba, Be gracious to me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the greatness of of your compassion blot out my transgressions wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin verse 3 for I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me this is the NASB I think I forgot to tell you that. Against you, you only, I have sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in the innermost being, and in the hidden part you will make me know wisdom. Purify me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness. Let the bones which you have broken Rejoice, hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, 
and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will be converted to you. So you see, he's saying, restore to me the joy of your salvation. He's admitting he knew his salvation would have been taken from him had he died in that sin. To think we don't have to repent is so crazy. I just don't get it. Anyway, he says, and sustain me with a willing spirit, willing to obey, then I will teach your transgressors your ways. So see, just because we've sinned, if we've asked for forgiveness, we're forgiven. It doesn't disqualify us from teaching. It makes us actually more uh, qualified. People who have gone through things and were saved from those lifestyles were brought out of those lifestyles are even more qualified in my opinion. My Assemblies of God pastor was self-taught. He didn't go to a ministry. He taught himself and he was a drug dealer when he was 20. His wife, who was not his wife then, she was a girl that he fell in love with kept asking her out and she finally told him about Jesus and he was like uh, he, he would have anything to do with me and she was yes he wants to save you and she laid it on the line that he would go to hell if he kept doing what he was doing and he stopped and he gave his heart to the Lord and they started dating. They ended up marrying. He went to business college. Well, university. Or, anyway, he had a degree in business. And then he started studying the word. Well, probably had started studying. But really in depth. Learning the Hebrew and the Greek. Using that. The Strong's Concordance. He taught, uh, he taught using... The Greek and Hebrew meanings, he was so smart and so educated. When he took uh, the board, uh, you know, Assemblies of God churches, you have to be qualified to be a preacher with them. You can't just teach yourself and get a church. So he had to sit before a board of people and answer question after question after question. I don't know how many hours he said it was. And he knew every one of them, put, a, put, a, their, put their jaws on the ground, knew more than men coming out of seminary, I'll guarantee you that, because they just don't teach that way. So he was really a better teacher from learning from the Holy Spirit, you see? Anyway, I don't know how I got off on that. Um, I guess thinking that some people don't think if you haven't been to Bible college, you shouldn't be teaching on here, but I don't know why that thought came to my head. On verse 13, we'll repeat it. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will be converted to you. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, the God of my salvation. Then my tongue will joyfully sing of your righteousness. 
O Lord, open my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. For you do not delight in sacrifice. Otherwise, I would give it. You are not pleased with burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. But, excuse me, by your favor, do good to Zion, build the walls of Jerusalem, then you will delight in righteous sacrifices, in burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then young bulls will be offered on your altar. That's why the Lord has said he, did, he was not happy. There's somewhere in here where it says, I am not happy with your sacrifices because they were doing it out of routine habit. That's what they were used to doing. And he wanted them to have a broken and contrite heart and bring their sacrifices after they had repented of their sins. He wanted them to do it as a sacrifice to him, not as a ritual. Don't do anything you do as a ritual, like anointing your home, pleading the blood, whatever you do on a nightly basis or a morning basis, do each time as unto the Lord, and then he will be pleased with your praises and your prayers, okay? That's what this is saying down here. So, I hope that I made that clear why God would want to hear this from us, to know we have a broken and contrite heart, that whatever we did, even if it's not murder and adultery, but you know what he said in the New Testament, he changed all them old laws. If we hate somebody, we murdered them in our heart. If you lusted after somebody, if they were married, it was adultery in your heart. That's the true meaning of that verse. I forget who taught that, but it's from a very old version that he got that. That, that it was really, if you so much as lust after a married woman, you have already committed adultery with her in your heart. So yeah, maybe you did commit adultery. Or if you lusted after a single woman, what did you do? You committed fornication in your heart. If you lusted after her, you know what I mean? Not just that she caught your eye and, oh, that's a pretty girl there. If you're single and you're looking and you think it's okay with God for you to get married, if you don't start looking, you won't find, right? Seek and you will find, well... You just don't take it too far, like start undressing them in your head. That's lusting after them. Okay, so know the difference. You know when you've sinned, you should have a guilty conscience over it. Okay, I'm going to end this here. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video and over myself and my computer and my internet connection. I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of you and your devices and your internet connections. And with that, I will say bye for now. I will talk to you later.